Hello. This is the video for the beginning web design class for November 17th, 2015. What we're going to be talking about today is WordPress. And what you'll need to do this lesson with me is to have the sheet that I handed out to everyone that has your WordPress admin website logins on it. So that's a double-sided sheet. Um, on one side at the top it says FTP usernames and passwords and on the other side it says WordPress admin website logins and that's the side that you want. And what you'll do is you'll locate your name on the left hand side and uh, once you find your name you'll, you'll go over to the far right column and that, there will be a website address there. You'll type that in and that will be your, where your website is located. In order to log into your website You'll scroll down to the right hand side of your website and right here where I'm showing site admin, that's because I'm logged in, it will say log in. You'll click on that and that will take you to a login screen. And let me go ahead and log out and show you what that looks like. So your login screen will look like this. So what you'll do is you'll put in your login information according to this paper. Your username will appear in the second column from the left. It'll be something like S17, I'm sorry, it'll be something like uh, student17, for example, is the one that I'm using. Uh, and then there will be a password uh, to the column to the right and the password column. Be careful when you enter that, make sure you're distinguishing between zeros and capital O's. And if you get something that looks like it might be a 1 or a lowercase l, you'll have to try both of those uh, in, in order to see if it works. All of these passwords should work. So if you try it a few different times, you should be able to get it. Okay, so once you're logged in, you will be in what's called the WordPress dashboard, which is what we're looking at right now. And you may or may not see these red dots here that show what updates are available. Um, but don't worry about that. That's not something we're going to concern ourselves with. The dashboard is the back end of WordPress, and it is uh, where you come to do all sort of administrative functions. So what we're going to do today is we're going to go through WordPress and take a little tour, and you guys will go along for the ride with me and try this out uh, just to get comfortable with the program. And then next week, we will uh, work on it together. Okay, so first of all, uh, when, you, when you log into the dashboard, you see this screen, which just gives you basically updates and announcements from WordPress. Uh, you don't have to pay a lot of attention to this if you don't want to. In the next section uh, down, if we click on this Updates button over on the left, this shows me everything that can be uh, updated in WordPress, including plugins up here and themes down here. Now, themes are what the look and feel of your website is. A theme is the way it, it looks. Um, right now we're currently using the 2012 theme. We all have that installed uh, so that we can all be sort of on the same page and all our WordPress websites will look the same. But of course there are tens of thousands of free themes out there and also commercial themes you can buy and easily install and make your website look any way that you want it to look. Um, up here at the top are plugins, and the plugins are um, an area where you can update the little helper applications for your program for WordPress. So, for example, uh, we see that there is there are uh, a couple of different themes up here that we can use. Um, my computer's being really weird, and every time I scroll down, it scrolls back up. Uh, 
uh, of its own volition. So anyway, I'll try and go up there and stay up there. So these are the plugins. You can see WooCommerce, Jetpack up at the top. And if you have any that are out of date, it will allow you to click on those uh, checkboxes and then hit the Update Plugins button, and that will update your plugins. Now, I'm not going to bother with updating any of those right now, uh, but you can do that kind of as you go through your website and keep those updated. Let's go down here to the next button here, which is called the Post button. Roll over that, and you see all these flyout menus come out. All posts will show you all the posts that are available for your website right now. There's one sample post in here, which is called Hello World. Um, we can click on that to take a look at that post. And we can see what it looks like. Welcome to WordPress, this is your first post. If we want to view this post, we can um, click on View Post. And it will show us here uh, what the post looks like. And there it is. Um, over here in the I'm going to move this up in hopes that it will stop this problem from occurring. Of course, it's not. Um, so the posts uh, will appear here in, in, on the individual post page, but they also appear on the home page. When WordPress is um, started out, when you start up WordPress, it looks like a uh, blog. Now I'm going to try something here. I'm going to turn off this little device right here and see if that stops the problem with the scroll bar and it seems to have so um, that was obviously the problem this dictation software I was using was causing the scroll bar to move up and down so I'm not going to use that anymore and that should solve that problem now um, I told you in class that WordPress was initially designed as blogging software and a blog is a website where a bunch of little posts like this one here get stacked up in reverse chronological order, meaning that the most recent post is on the top. Now, if I go, if I want to go, right now I'm in what's called the front end of my website, which is I'm looking at the content as a user would. But I can log back into my website by rolling over this My Site link and then clicking on Dashboard. That takes me back into it. Now, if I go to the posts, I roll over this, I can click on Add New to add a new post, and this will add a new post to my blog. So I can do something like new post, type that in the title box, and then down here is where you type your content. You can say, here is my new post. Okay, then over here on the right, you click publish. That will take this data and publish it to your database, which is attached to WordPress. Then you can click on view post. You'll see the post in its own individual page, and if you want to see the home page, just click on the home button. And now you'll see two posts, the original Hello World post and the new post, which is on top because it's newer. It tells you what time it was posted and what category it's in. Um, now I'll go ahead and log back into my dashboard here. We'll go back under posts. Now notice that you can look at all your posts like we did before. Now there's two of them and you can get to these posts by clicking on this, by clicking edit. Uh, you can also just view the post directly. You can trash the post or do quick edit which will just allow you to uh, edit certain information. Like let's say you don't want the comments box to appear on this post. That's located in Quick Edit. You can uncheck that, hit Update. And uh, now if we were to go look at this particular post right here, um, we would see that there was no comment box. So if I just go View, see there's no big comment box down here to see. So I'm now going to hit my back arrow to go back to the post. Now. So we know we can make new posts by just rolling over posts and clicking Add New. We can also click Add New at the top here. And we can also add categories for the post, so the posts can be grouped together in certain categories. Like, for example, I could make a category called News, and I could add that new category to my list of categories over here. So you see we start out with a default uncategorized category, and now we've added a News category. If I go into my posts, I could do a quick edit, and I could say, okay, I want this new post to be the category of news. And I'm going to update that. And then I could go into this second post and hit quick edit and say, okay, I want that to be the news category as well. Okay, and so now when we go to our website, we see that there's a couple posts over here. 
but there's also categories over here like for example news and if we click on news it brings up all of the posts that are in that category which of course are the both of the posts so you can create as many categories as you want and all of the um, posts will be grouped together under those categories so people can easily get to them so that's what posts are and of course posts will only appear on the blog which by default is the front page of WordPress but in this class we're not really concentrating on the blog we're, we're concentrating on making a website so um, what we might want to do what we definitely want to do is turn the blog off either turn it off or uh, move it to another page of the website so let's see how we would do that uh, to turn it off you would go down to the settings menu on the left hand side then come down here to the word reading and click on that and then this says that your front page currently displays your latest posts. But if you click on this radio button down here and say you want it to display a static page, you can click on this drop down menu and choose a page. So we'll choose the sample page. Uh, if you wanted your post to be shipped over to another page, like a blog page, you could select that. But right now we don't have any additional pages, so we can't select any more than that sample page. So we'll, we'll say a sample page is going to be the home page. Scroll down here to the bottom and hit Save Changes. And now if we go look at our front page, you see that it is now the home page, right? And that's the a generic content that's in there. Notice that we also have a comment box here. Now, if I want to edit this page, I can click on this edit page link at the top. Um, and I could go in here and take some of this text out and add text or pictures or whatever I want to do. Now, um, let's say that uh, we've we've jumped down here to the pages section from the post section we'll come back to this media section in a second but this is what the pages look like they look identical to posts except pages are brand new pages on the website instead of being just little entries that that um, stack up on the blog so if I want to add a new page I can simply click over here under pages and click on add new or I can go add new up here at the top I, I get a page that looks just like the post uh, entry page but now it's going to be a uh, page so I'll just make a fake page here called gallery, type in here and say this is my gallery, put period, and hit the blue publish button. Now if I want to view this page, I can click this view page link. And sure enough, here's my gallery page. You can see now I have two pages in my menu, my home page and my gallery. And my gallery page is stacked up to the right of or after my home page. And if I click on my home page, I see that sample content in there. Now maybe I don't want my home page to say sample page, which is what the people who made this named it. So I can click on edit page. I can go in here and I can change this to say home. And then hit update, clicking the blue update button on the left. Now I can click on view page. And so we see the home page with the word home and then we click on gallery, it switches us over to the gallery page and this is the, the headline, the title of the gallery page plus the content, right? If I want to edit this page, I can click on edit page there or even this little edit button, which by the way, your users don't see that. They don't see this bar up here. Only you see this as the, as the administrator when you log in. Okay, so let's go back. We skipped over the, um, the media section. We'll get back there in just a second. Let's go back to the pages. We can view all our pages in this list. We have home and gallery. Notice it's showing that this is the front page. So let's go in and click on this. Now you may have noticed that the pages that we made, they have two sections to them. They have a, a content area on the left and then they have a sidebar on the right. And that's what's called the default template. If you look over here, there's something called the default template which is being used for this page. But if we click on this drop down, we have a couple other templates we could use. We could use one called the front page template. Click on that and hit update. And now we'll view the page. And now, instead of the page having content over on the left-hand side and a sidebar on the right, it's got content that goes all the way across. All right, And that's the front page, and that's kind of a special page because it has something called widgets, which are little areas where you can put in little pieces of code uh, to display things like advertisements or social media. And those are made special for the front page template. So if you're going to use the front page template at all, it makes sense to use it on the front page. Um, but not on other pages. For example, if I wanted this other page, this gallery page, to be full width, notice it's currently the default template, which is content on the left and the sidebar on the right. 
And the sidebar is displaying the search bar and recent posts, recent comments, archives, categories, and what's called metadata, which is your login and log out. Well, if I wanted to change this page to the full width template, I would click on edit page. I would go over here to the template section, click on the drop down, and change it to full width page template, no side. Click on update, then click on view page. And now you see that the sidebar goes away. If I had enough text to go all the way across, it would go all the way across. So this is how you create pages and how you edit the templates of the pages to display what you want, either a full width or a sidebar. Now, as we learn more about WordPress, we'll learn that we can even edit those templates to make pages do different things, like put the sidebar over on the left, for example, or even make multiple columns, like three column uh, page templates. OK, so let's go back in here to our dashboard. Let's take one more look at the pages template and let's talk about um, the different things that are on this uh, area right here. So for example, uh, up here we know that this is what I'll call the content box where you can put in content to be on your web page. Up here is a toolbar that has things like bold and italics so you can click on a word and make it bold or you can double click on a word and make it italic. Um, you got something called strike through, which is another thing that you can do. We have uh, bullet points here, so we could type in, you know, apple, uh, pear, uh, tomato, tomato, uh, highlight those three, click that, you get them into a bulleted list, or click this, which is a numbered list, and you see the numbers there, right? We also can do something called a block quote. Uh, let's see, this is my famous quote. Okay, type that, highlight it. Okay, so it looks kind of like a quote there. Uh, let's see, this one here we'll put in a horizontal line, also called a rule, okay, which you can undo by doing Command Z or Control Z on the um, PC. Uh, we also have alignment here, align left, align center, align right. This tool is for linking. If you wanted to take this word Apple and link it to yahoo.com, for example, you could click on that. Put in the full web address, which would include the http colon forward slash forward slash www, in this case, dot yahoo.com, and hit add link. And now when you update this page, that will become a link to Yahoo. If you want to get rid of that link, you can click this remove link button, it goes away. Uh, you can have a insert more, read more tag here. So uh, if we did that, let's see, let's type some more text in here. This is more text. Okay, let's see what happens. Okay, so what happens is um, your user will see this more button and they can click on it to see more text or less text. And the, the more or less text would be... Um, down here, I believe, under the block quote here. So let me see if I can move my, this is more text down here after the more. Let's see how that looks. Okay, so this is more text. It's hidden underneath the more. So when somebody sees this, they'll see whatever is above the word more, and then they'll have a link they can click on it to view more. Uh, and then we have this button here, which actually opens up a whole second tier. Uh, it's called the kitchen sink button, or toolbar toggle used to be called the kitchen sink button. It brings in all these different options that we can do. For example, a paragraph. So uh, let me go up here and say this is a paragraph, right? Paragraph. And then I can say this is another. And then if I highlight one of these and click on paragraph, it gives out a paragraph tag gives that a paragraph tag. And we can click over here uh, on the right top right side, we see that there's a visual tab which shows us what the page is going to look like and a text tab which shows us uh, you know, what, the, what the code is behind that, right? And so you know, when, you, when you make a, a turn a section into a paragraph, you will, you know, in the case of WordPress, create some space there between it the, the, between the two lines that will make it look like a paragraph. Now there's other things you can do like um, you can make what's called a header one tag which is a 
our heading one tag, which is the largest heading that you can make in WordPress. Um, you can then make a heading two tag. Gotta check my, let's see. Gotta get rid of this little H1 here so this will look the way I want it to. Click on the H2, highlight that, and go down here to the H2 tag. And what you'll see is there's six headings here that each get progressively smaller. And these could be used for things like this could be used for a copyright, and this could be used for a headline on a page. And so those are called H1 through H6 tags. And you can see that if we highlight heading one, that the H1 uh, tag that's around it gives that the H1 appearance. All the H2 tag around the second line gives it the H2 appearance, which is smaller. So you can see in here that we're using uh, the HTML tags that we learned about early in the semester and used in, uh, in Dreamweaver. Those are actually being formatted on these WordPress pages. Now we also have uh, underlines, uh, full justification, which is running the lines all the way across. Uh, we have color, uh, text color that we can do here. Um, if you're pasting some text in from, say, micro Microsoft Word or something, you can click here, and uh, it looks like it's already uh, plugged in, so you could copy and paste Microsoft Word documents in here, clean them up a little bit. This will clear any existing formatting that you have out. This is what's called a special character, so if I wanted to do something like a copyright symbol or something, I could come in here, locate that copyright symbol, which is right here, and then there it is located. And it's called a special character because it doesn't actually put, uh, it puts in a special code that displays that copyright symbol. Um, we also have uh, indentation that you can do. Um, I can indent this line or outdent it to take it back to normal. And we have an undo and a redo and also some keyboard shortcuts here, which will help you with uh, quick key commands. So this is the, um, the text editor in WordPress. This is currently, we're editing a page, we're editing my gallery page, but the same text editor exists for posts. And when you go in there, all the same buttons work for posts, right? So after I've made my changes, I wanna click on update uh, to go ahead and write that to the database. If I wanna get rid of it, I can move it to the trash. Um, we also have over here an area where you can stagger the publication of a page or a post to sometime in the future. So for example, this is currently being published right now when I'm doing this, um, this tutorial, but I could click on this edit button and say, well, I don't really want this to be published until tomorrow, which would be the 18th. And I could hit OK and then update, and this thing would sit in the database until the server hit that time on its clock, and then it would go ahead and show up. I'm gonna cancel that because I want it to appear right away. Now over here, uh, in the page attribute section, we talked about the templates uh, for order. This is an outdated feature right here that we're not gonna use. Um, as is parents, we're not gonna use either of those features, so we won't spend a lot of time on them. Uh, featured image, you can attach an image to this page, which will be brought up um, in certain areas. When you wanna see uh, this page, it will be uh, represented by a featured image that you can upload by clicking here and selecting a a file on your computer. Um, for example, we'll see, uh, let's see if I have, here's something called a cool quote. Okay, that's kind of weird. Uh, all right, here we go, a Dia de los Muertos picture. Okay, let's use that. It's kind of huge, uh, but let's just hit open. You see it upload, and then uh, we can come down here to this blue button, set featured image. And now you see that this is the image which will be used. For example, certain plugins, if you want to display all the different pages in your website on your home page, certain plugins, uh, which are little helper applications that you can load in to WordPress here, will display the featured image for each page. So it might show this as a thumbnail as well as the featured image for all the other pages. Now that featured image won't show up uh, on the page itself. It only showed up when the featured image um, area is being put into use. So for example, if we go view this page right now, we're going to see, well, actually I completely lied or drink, or it made me a liar. It actually uh, threw the featured image right there at the top, which is, you know, the way this particular theme is set up. 
So if I hit my back arrow to get rid of this, let's say I, I you know, wanted to get rid of that featured image. Let me go forward again. Uh, so I'm going to hit Edit Page. I say, oh, I don't, I don't really want that huge image, you know, to be my featured image and be at the top of my page. I'll click Remove Featured Image, uh, and now I can hit Update and view my page, and that will be gone. Yay! I love it when it actually works. Okay, now let's say that I did want to put some image content on my page here. I could click right before I want the image and click Add Media. This will allow me to click on Upload Files and select files, and then select files off of my desktop or my computer. Or I can go to this thing called the Media Library, which we skipped over before, select any images that are in there, and you know have them show up on the page. I can give them captions. I can say, you know, Dia de los Muertos. Um, I can put alt text, which is uh, something that shows up in an alt tag for screen readers. I can put in a little description I want. If I want, this uh, may help with uh, search engine optimization, put in the name of the image, and so on and so forth. Then I can decide how to align the image. Maybe I want it on the left or the center or the right of the content that I'm putting it next to. I can link it to something. In this case, I'm going to leave it aligned left. Uh, I can link it to either a bigger version of the file, to another page, to a custom uh, link, or I can link it to nothing, which is what I'm going to choose to do. And then you also have custom sizes. You can choose the full size, which is ginormous, so we're not going to do that. Let's just try the thumbnail. So we've made all our choices here for a picture. And you know, when you're doing this at home, just go ahead and select a picture off your um, computer to play with and do the same thing I'm doing. Uh, try and get a smaller picture, like a picture that's uh, 72 pixels per inch uh, ready for the web, not one of the 300 pixels per inch nice uh, photos you're using for graphic design. If necessary, go to the internet and just download a, a generic picture off of um, Google do a search for something and, and uh, save it on your desktop and then upload it. So we'll just click insert into page. You'll see the picture show up here as a thumbnail. Always remember to hit your blue update button when you've made a change and then click uh, view page. And now you can see here's my page with my image in. It's not linked to anything. Okay, so we'll go back to um, I hit my back arrow and it's not showing up now because it's, it's displaying the version of the page that was before I updated it, but that's not really a problem because uh, we know it's already updated. So I'm just coming in here so we can look in the media section. Uh, this is called the media library and what you can do is just hit this add new button and then you can either drag files right onto that window or uh, go grab them in here um, and they will show up. You know, you can come here to any kind of, uh, let's see, I'm trying to find some kind of there's a picture of a guitar. Okay, there's a picture of a guitar. So you hit open. It will upload that picture, and now it will be available to you in your media library wherever you want to put it. So, for example, I could go to my pages. And I could say, oh, let's put that picture of the guitar on the, on the front page. So I'll, I'll click in front of some content. I'll click Add Media. Go to my media library. Click on that guitar. Fill this out if I want. Fill this stuff out. I'm going to say none for the link again and insert it into the page. There it is showing up. Now, if I want to edit this, I can click on it. Um, I can change the alignment right here. Um, I can remove it by clicking on that, or I can click the edit button. I can say, you know, I actually really want this to be the medium size, and I want it to be on the right. Um, and that will, as soon as I hit update, that will change. Now, if you wanted to replace this completely with another picture, you could hit Edit Original, and, um, I'm sorry, if you hit Edit Original, that would allow you to do things like um, go ahead and you could rotate your image right in here, counterclockwise or clockwise. You could flip it uh, vertically or horizontally or vertically. You can undo and redo. You can scale the image by just putting any any number in here that you want. Like if I put 700 in there, it's going to scale it appropriately. You can crop your image. Uh, this will give you a little crop box that will appear. So if I want to say like two to one or something like that, it, it will do that. Um, or I can choose a little uh, choose this crop button here and um, draw out a crop box, and it'll show me you know what kind of cropping I'm actually doing. 
Let me go ahead and crop this to exactly what it is so we're not uh, making that any smaller. And then you can apply that, that whatever changes you're doing to all versions of the image that WordPress makes for you. Here's a little uh, question box that gives you more information. So once we're done, um, we can, let's see, let's say we would scale the image. So we're just doing everything we possibly can in here. Okay, and then um, we've done everything we can possibly do in here. We click our back button. Uh, now we want it to be medium size on the right and we hit update. And there you go, and we hit update again. And now we can click view page and see that that image is over on the right. It's a larger version of the image. Okay, so this is how you make pages, how you put content into the pages, how you make posts, how you upload media. And that media can be different kinds of media. It could be video that you upload to the media library. It can be audio. It could be PowerPoint. Pretty much anything you can slap up there on the web will uh, be able to go into the media library. Now, you also have a comments section here, which will list all the comments that have been created for your website. Uh, there's a sample one in here by Mr. WordPress. And you can, you know, if you accept comments on your website, they'll show up here. You can choose to uh, reply to them, unapprove them, edit them, uh, mark them as spam or trash, whatever you'd like to do with your comments. Now, over here under Appearance, we've got a section called Themes. And in here, uh, there are some existing themes that you can look at. You can click uh, Add New. And then uh, that will take you to a section which shows you uh, some featured themes, some popular themes, uh, what the latest themes are, and will even give you the option to filter your themes based on color, layout, features, and subject. You can you know, click all the different options that you think, oh, I want my theme to be all this kind of crazy stuff. Um, you know, okay, there it goes. So. Let's go, let's apply these filters. No, nothing was found. Okay, so let's edit it. Let's take holiday out of there. And let's say we want it to be uh, two columns with brown and green. Okay, and so these are, you know, the options that come back. Now keep in mind, this stuff, this theme stuff is all for the future for you. Because right now, in this class, we're just going to use this 2012 theme. So don't don't switch out your theme uh, just yet. This is for the future when you design websites. But it's very easy to switch out your theme. You simply click install, and then a, a page comes up that asks if you want to activate that theme. Once you activate it, it, it becomes the default theme. So I'll show you an example of it, and then I'll go back to my 2012 theme. So we'll click install on this causes theme. We'll click, uh, well, we'll just click live preview so we can see what it would look like. And it's going to take my existing content and show what it would look like in this theme, right? And so that's what it's going to look like. So I'll hit my back arrow, um, and I can say, well, if I wanted it to be an active theme, uh, I could click Activate, uh, or I could just say, you know what, I don't want to activate that yet and leave this page. Right now, it shows that my active theme is still 2012. That's what I want. But it loaded this into WordPress in case I ever want to use it. Now, you can customize themes by going right here to this Customize section. Uh, for site identity, it's going to put the, the name up here and then the tagline. Um, and so we can, you know, leave that how it is or change it. For colors, um, you can have, click here to select uh, a color for your header text. Um, you can also select the background color for your website right here. So we'll just pick something random. Uh, now you can upload a header image for your website. Uh, keep in mind this number here, 960 by 250. I'm going to want you to make a header image at that size. So in Photoshop or Illustrator, whatever program you like to use, make make a image that's 960 pixels wide by 250 pixels high at 72 pixels per inch, and then you would simply upload it here, right? So I'll just do like the quickest worst possible example ever so hold on a second let me there we go photoshop hello photoshop please come up for me now 
Okay, let's uh, see if we can hide Chrome. Oh, I don't want to quit Google Chrome, I want to hide it. Okay, it's really not being very friendly, is it? Um, let's see. I really want Photoshop to launch, but it's not being very friendly. Okay, let's see. Come on, Photoshop. Rah. All right. This is what we're going to do. We're going to go to View. I'm going to exit full screen. Okay, that makes it easier. Uh, then we can hide Google Chrome. And here's Photoshop for us. So let's just take this friendly guy here uh, and let's rotate him uh, 90 degrees. And then let's change his size to, uh, we'll, we'll uncheck this. So what was it, 960 by 250, I think, were the dimensions. It's going to look pretty weird uh, at 72 pixels per inch. So, you know, you guys should make one that looks real, has your name up here and a nice picture and everything. I'm just going to make the world's worst. Let me double check my sizes here, 960 by 250. Okay. So now we'll uh, save this uh, as a JPEG. I'm just going to save it on my desktop and call it header. Um, and then we'll go in here and we'll click Add New Image. We'll click Upload Files and Select Files. We'll go to our desktop and look for header and hit Open. And we'll just hit Select and Crop. If you want to crop it, you could. We'll skip the cropping. And uh, now that's the image that's going to be added to the top of my web page. Um, for menus, it's, 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 you know, you can add custom menus in here. We'll talk about that in a second. Widgets, you can add custom widgets, which are little helper applications, and it's showing you what your static of front page is and, and the fact that you don't have a post page indicated, right? So after you make all these changes into customization area, you can click Save and Publish and then click this X to get out of here. It'll take you back to the regular dashboard and then you can click on my site and you see the blue background that I added and here is my header. Notice that the header currently comes underneath the navigation bar. We'll, we'll talk about how to change that later so it's ab above it. Um, and you can see that it's starting to look more like a scary, poorly designed website, which was my goal. Okay, so now let's go into the dashboard again. Let's continue our quest down the dashboard. So we're in appearance, we looked at themes, we looked at customize. Let's look at widgets here. Widgets are these little things that appear on the side or maybe the top or bottom of your web page. Remember when you saw the sidebar, it had all these little things in it like a search box. And that's what the widget area is. Now in order to see these widgets, we're gonna to have to go back to one of our pages. Let's go to this gallery page. And we're gonna to have to change its template so that it will display the sidebar. So we'll go back to the default template and hit update. That's, remember the default is the one that has the content on the left and the uh, sidebar on the right. So you'll see in this default layout here that the sidebar is on the right. You see the search box up there at the top and then recent posts, recent comments. Okay, so if we wanted to edit the widgets area, we might say, you know, we don't really need this search box. You know, I don't want the search box. So you can click on this arrow to open it up. You hit delete, okay? And then that automatically gets updated. So now you can go look at the front end of your website, go to the gallery page. And now when we look at the sidebar, there's no search box there, it went away. So, um, the widgets can be added or deleted at will. If we, uh, over here on the left are all the existing widgets that we have, here's the search box one. To add them to the sidebar widget, you just simply click on them and drag them into place here, and uh, they get they show up in the sidebar widget. So now I've, I've dragged a widget over here to my main sidebar. Now the search box should reappear. So I'm gonna go to gallery, and sure enough, there's my search box. So that's what widgets are. You can add tons of them in via um, the plugins area, uh, which we'll get to right after we're done talking about appearance. Um, now we're going to go down here to the menu section, talk about that first section. So the menu section allows you to make custom menus for WordPress. And um, so we'll go down here 
And you'll notice that right now it's showing that I have an existing menu and there's a gallery page and a home page. It has a home page here twice. If I want to get rid of this one, I can click on that triangle to open it up and just hit remove and then uh, hit create menu to basically update this menu, right? Now when you create this menu, you can give it a name. So I can, I can call this menu, uh, let's call it main navigation. So main-navigation, and we'll hit save menu. And notice you have a couple buttons at the bottom here. Uh, do you want this to be the primary menu? Yes, we want it to be up at the top of the site. Do you want to add, automatically add new pages to this menu as you create them? Yes, I think that's a good idea. So let's hit save menu. So now if we go back over to our pages section and we click add new, so let's, let's make it about page. So this is about me. We hit publish. Now we go back to appearance and menus. And you'll see sure enough the about page, it's listed over here, which is where all the pages that exist on your site show up. And then it's listed over here as the pages that are showing up in the menu. And sure enough, if we go to the front of your site, you see it's showing up. Now, you'll also see that the pages are stacking up in the order that I created them. But what if I wanted the about to be you know, ne next to home and gallery to be the last one? Well, all you have to do is click on this about page here and drag it up above the gallery page, hit save menu, and then go look at the front end of your website and now it's reformatted to be you know, in that order that you wanted it to be. Now you can also make drop down menus. Let's say we wanted the gallery to be a drop down menu of about. So we click on the gallery and we simply drag it over a little bit so that it's indented. It becomes a sub item of about. We hit save menu. And now you see about, but when you roll over it, you get this sub menu here. And you can stack those up, you know, as many as you like. And uh, they, will, they will stack up in that order. Um, you can also make a custom link, a menu item. So let's say I wanted to you know, make a link in my menu bar that would go to Yahoo. Well, I could type in Yahoo's URL up there and put the link how I want it to show up. It's going to get added to the bottom. You can put it wherever I want in my website menu and hit Save Menu. And then when I go visit the site, there's Yahoo, and clicking on it will, in fact, take me to Yahoo. Um, okay, so you can make brand new menus by clicking here and you can put those menus in your sidebar or in your footer or whatever you want uh, but this is the basic menu uh, functionality that you'll use for your website now over here under the appearance section on the left we have a header section which just takes you into this customization area that we've been to already uh, and the same is true of the background it takes you into a, a customization area for the background you can Put an image in your background and then decide you know, how you want that image to appear. Let's say we want to add this uh, guitar in the background. Well, once you add it, you can say, well, do you want it to repeat or not repeat? In other words, no repeat would mean just one version of the image, and tile would mean it would just keep uh, re-showing that image over and over again, like tiles on your bathroom floor. It would cover the whole background of the page. You can make it so that it would just go across horizontally as a tile or a tile vertically down. Um, you can make that image hang out at the left in the center of your page or on the right. And you can make it so that image, when you scroll down the page, so that it stays in one location or it scrolls with you. Right? So let's just pick tile and do save and publish. Now I warn you, this is going to look extremely weird and bad, but let's just go ahead and look at it anyway. So you can see back there that my little guitar picture is repeating and tiling and showing up, you know, at the back of my whole web page. It looks terrible, but that's, you know, what it does. Uh, under editor, this is how you can get to the actual HTML code and CSS code of all the web pages in WordPress. The main pages are lifted, listed on the side here, and you can click on any of them to get to that information. Like for example, it comes up with a style sheet by default. And you could go in here and make uh, custom changes and update that file. Be careful when you're doing that because you can mess up the site pretty badly if you don't know what you're doing. 
So we'll, we'll do some of that together. Um, I've just got a few more sections here to talk about. The plugins area, if you click on the install plugins, it'll show you what's in here right now. Once again, these are little helper apps that let you do cool things with your website. You can add new plugins just like you would add new themes. You just do a search for them, like uh, one of my favorite um, website galleries. It's called Next Gen Gallery. You can click on that, read about it, see how many people uh, downloaded it, and, and what the star rating is. You can click Install now and activate it to go ahead and activate that plugin. And we'll talk more about plugins in the class. Um, and if there's editing to be done on that plugin, you can click here to edit it. Now under users, uh, it simply lists all the people who are users of your website. You can give them different uh, permissions, different profiles. So let's say I wanted to add somebody to my website. I could put in all their pertinent information. And then I could list what level of access they have to the website. There's these five levels of access. Administrator is you, and you can do everything. Editor might be somebody who could uh, look at certain posts and edit them and post them on the website. An author might just be able to write certain posts but would have to send them to an editor uh, for their approval before they show up on the website. A contributor might be able to see certain sections of the website and, and contribute information. And a subscriber generally just sees the information. So if you want to add other personnel to your website, you can do it through here. Uh, under your profile, it's going to show you information about you, uh, and it'll let you change the color scheme of this administrative area to any one of these that you'd like. Now under tools, we've got import and export tools. The export tool would be uh, the one that you would use to move WordPress to a new location, like for example at the end of the semester when you want to export your site to uh, a new location. Uh, you could get web hosting somewhere like HostMonster or GoDaddy and you could export all your information and then import it into the new website. Under settings, we have uh, general settings, which are it's the information that comes up at the top of the site. Um, we have writing sections, which uh, tell you, for example, how people uh, can use the email for the site that's associated with the site. The reading section is where we decide which page is going to be on the front. If it's a blog, how many posts show up. Discussion is where you deal with whether or not you're going to allow people to make comments. Uh, you can change all of these settings to allow people to have comments. Media is just um, the size of the thumbnail, medium, and large size for your media library. And permalinks is what sets the look and feel of the link up at the top of your page. By default, it's this big, nasty number kind of thing. Uh, but if you want it to just show the name of your, your page or your post, you click on post name come down here and hit Save Changes. Now when we go look at our website now, if I go to the About page, before it would have shown something like some big scary number of the page. But now when I click on the About page, it actually says the word About. That helps with people recognizing where they are and also with uh, search engine optimization for people finding your website. Um, so an Akismet is a, a plugin that allows you to stop spam comments from coming to your website. Now you can collapse this menu by clicking on this little button right here. That's going to make it so you just see the icons. You roll over them, it's going to tell you what they are. Uh, up here we have this new uh, drop-down menu which will allow you to add posts, uh, media to the library, uh, add a new page or add a new user. And of course you can go visit the site by clicking there. Now I recommend when people work on their websites that they have two tabs open. One would be the front end, which would be what we're looking at now, and the other would be the dashboard, which is the back end. So they can click back and forth between these tabs and very quickly go back to making changes and then refreshing the page on the other tab to see what it looks like. Um, okay, so that's my uh, overview of the WordPress and how to uh, log in, uh, navigate all the sections. So what I would like you to do is uh, go ahead and make a, a header image, make something that looks nice, not like my terrible image, and uh, play around with putting a background color or a picture in just for fun right now, just get some uh, use out of it. And then put some, uh, make some sample pages, just give them names and put some content in there. And just, just generally try out the different sections of WordPress and familiarize yourself 
with this tool here, this software package. Uh, and then when we come back next week, we'll look at it together and talk about you know, my expectations, what I want you to do uh, with this software. Okay, if you have any questions or problems with this, please uh, email me. You can do that through the website at pima.dreamco.com. Uh, and I will get back to you uh, with any help that I can offer. All right, thank you so much, and I will see you next week.